So welcome to this video, my name is Alex. Now I haven't made a face-to-face -face video like this for a while. I've been focusing more on sharing music videos, dance music videos, which I really enjoy making, and um, ambient, chill-out music videos. And the reason that music is so important is because it communicates with us on a level much, much deeper than our thoughts. And most of us spend most of our time thinking. All day long we're thinking about this and that, where we inhabit a realm of thoughts which is actually very superficial. It's like a map. It's like a two-dimensional map of the real landscape. And we think we understand the landscape because we're, we've studied this map so carefully and we've got more and more detail to our map that we think that we think we understand. We think we understand reality. We, we think we understand who we are. We think we can understand everything and we can't. And our map is inaccurate, completely inaccurate, in fact. Because the truth that what, well, how can I put this into words? Um, the true feeling, the true experience of being alive, not here, but the true experience of being alive, which is felt deeply in our body and in our heart and in our emotions, the true experience of being alive cannot be mapped. It's impossible to map it. You have to be there, you have to experience it in this moment. So the idea that you can map it and then understand it and refer to that map and think the map has any value whatsoever is preposterous because you have to um, have to be there. You can only be there. And when you're there, then this whole other world of understanding kind of becomes so ridiculous and so it couldn't be more of a waste of time. But when you're there, you don't think that. When you're spending all your time in this, in this mental understanding, all these mental thoughts of what's going on in the world, what's going to happen in the future, when you're there, then something inside your mind, you could call it your ego, persuades you that this, this realm is valuable, this realm is true, or this realm has um, kind of any power, any influence over, over the world. It's, it's just a waste of time. It's a waste of time. And we only see that it's a waste of time. When we come away from this realm of thoughts, the heady realm of understanding, conceptualizing, and uh, thinking about everything and anything, only when we come away from that realm and we get back into our body, do we remember what life truly is. We experience what life truly is. And that's what I want for you. I want that for myself. I want that for every human being, to remember what life truly is because we are heart-centered creatures. Human beings are meant to be heart-centered centered creatures, which means that our center of gravity, our, the center of our personage, we feel it as our heart, we feel it in our heart, and we feel connected to our heart because our heart is essentially the engine room to this body, you know, pumping blood, circulating oxygen to every cell of our body, keeping our cells vibrant and clean and fresh, with oxygen. So that's a felt experience and our heart is at the um, at the center of all of that. Now again, we can't understand this. You know, I, I'm almost wasting my time trying to explain or get you to understand this other realm because because the hungry mind is so so keen to turn it into a map. It's keen to turn everything into a map a bit of information that it can file away in this um, mental um, storage system as, and refer to it later as if we don't really need to feel anymore, we don't need to experience anything, we can just go back to our memory of understanding the previous experience or the previous, um, the previous feeling we had or the previous time we had that powerful uh, emotion and we don't need to feel anything anymore because it's all, it's all up here. We just pull out the file or we pull out this memory bank and, and say, oh yeah, 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 I know what that's all about. And that's how we disconnect from our actual experience of life. We spend all our time going over these files, these memories, these expectations, these understandings. It's just, again, I'm wasting my time talking about it. Because what I want for you is that you feel alive and you understand in your heart what life is truly about. And you can do that. And by understanding or by opening your heart and 
wanting, wanting more spiritual illumination. You've got to want it. Nothing will happen in life unless you want what is good for you. And, you know, we don't really know what's good for us. Part of us does. Part of us knows that exercise and clean and healthy food and um, good plenty of sleep and treating people the right way and forgiving people, part of us knows that that's good for us. You could say our heart, our heart knows. But then all that is countered by this other part of us, which is like a, a stubborn little child. And it wants to do the opposite of what it knows is good for us. It wants to eat the junk food or it wants to uh, take advantage of people or it's angry, it's angry essentially. It's a stubborn child that's angry and wants to break the rules. It wants to do all the things that it knows will um, bring about destruction or, or misery or it just is angry and it wants to share its anger. And the best way of doing that is to ignore um, all the things that it knows is good for us because what's good for us is good for the people around us. So if we ignore what's good for us, and essentially we punish ourselves, we deny ourselves what's good for us. We punish ourselves by making ourselves tired, stressed, sick, um, angry, hostile. If we poison ourselves, which is punishing ourselves, then we're poisoning the people around us. And that's what this angry, stubborn child in your head wants to do. It wants to ignore everything it knows is right and good. So it's important to be aware that there's a part of you um, which wants to rebel against everything which is in your best interest and in the best interest of those around you. Because when you shine, when you are a fountain of love and kindness and generosity and patience, then of course the people around you benefit and it inspires them to do the same. And can you imagine a society inhabited or populated by people who are a fountain of goodness and care and concern and love and generosity? That would be a utopia. And really, whether or not it's possible, that's you know a, a hypothetical a philosophical debate, whether or not it's possible, is it doesn't matter. What matters is that we can move one step closer, one step closer to um, to that vision of utopia by being who we know we can be, being who we're designed to be, being the person this world needs you to be. The people around you, you know, they're, they're hungry for people who, are, who want to give. They're hungry for people who are not obsessed with themselves, but people who want to um, enrich the lives of others. Everyone is hungry for that. Everyone is desperate to meet someone who is really concerned and cares about them and who is interested in their well-being and who, who values them. So you can be that person. In fact, you need to be that person. That's possibly one of the most important things I can tell you is that you need to be the person that you've been put here to be. We have a blueprint, a blueprint of loving kindness, generosity, tolerance, compassion, concern. And um, that's the blueprint for who you are designed to be. And it's waiting for you. And Every time you step closer to, to take one step closer to completely fulfilling that blueprint, your life gets better. Your life improves uh, how can I put, exponentially. Everything improves. You feel more fulfilled. You're, you feel more connected. You feel less selfish. You feel less self-loathing. Everything you want is going to come to you as you become a more patient, tolerant, forgiving, loving and caring person. There is no way around it. There is no shortcut. There is no alternative. That is what life is waiting for. It's life is waiting for you to take your place, to step forward into this place where you are fulfilling your blueprint, fulfilling who you're meant to be, the loving human being you are meant to be. And life is waiting. In fact, the whole universe is waiting for you to step in to that place, to step into your role as a loving human being. Now, of course, there are obstacles within you that want to stop you doing that. The stubborn child I spoke about, the stubborn child in your mind, which wants to rebel and not do what it knows is good. 
wants to do what is bad because it's angry. There's an, there's an angry, stubborn child inside of you. Who it's angry with doesn't really matter. It might be your mother, it might be your father from, you know, when you're a child. It might be from being treated badly. It might be from being denied something you really desperately wanted and it didn't happen. It might be from being hurt by someone who you loved or who you thought loved you. It doesn't matter why that angry person or angry child is there. The fact is it's there and it wants to punish you, it wants to hurt you, and it wants to punish and hurt the people around you. It wants to express its anger by creating disharmony, by sharing itself. Every Any emotion that you indulge in wants to be shared, it wants to share itself. You know, so when you're angry, you want to share that anger and you want to um, you want other people to feel it. You want other people to know how you feel. But when you're happy and joyful, the same is true. You want to share your joy. You want to share um, the feeling, the good feeling you have in your heart. Because we're innately uh, sharing creatures, human beings. We're very, very social. And we don't want to be alone with our feelings. We want to be, we want to share them. So it's really important to understand that part of you wants to share negativity. Part of you wants to share anger and frustration and blame and grief and pain and all those things. Part of you wants to put that out, wants to broadcast that message. And of course, that is not what this world needs. And I'm sure you can recognize that. What this world needs is your love, the good side, the best of you, your forgiving heart. You're, you've got a heart which is so good, so good, so loving, so decent, and I know you have because you're, hum you're a human being, you're watching this video, you've got a, this, this part of your heart, or right? in fact, the kind of the, the very core of your heart is that loving person who feels things deeply, who's so sensitive, who really cares, who really wants to be safe, most fundamentally, really wants to be safe and be loved and to share that love, for it to be a two-way a two-way uh, appreciation of love and care. Now that's, whether you admit it or not, and whether you're willing to accept it or not, that is in your heart. That's the core of your heart. And so your, you know, your main prerogative is to get back to that, is to peel away all these layers that have been, these kind of barricades that have been put there by this angry and wounded child this child who's been hurt too many times, all the barricades that have been have built up around your heart to protect it, we need to remove all those barricades. And in the process, we will feel the pain that we've wanted to avoid. We will feel the pain that, um, that we've experienced in life that was, that's been stored there. We, it will come to the surface, but we have to let it go. If it doesn't come to the surface, we can't let it go. So it's very important that you let go of any pain that, uh, that you're holding on to inside because it's poisoning you, it's poisoning your heart and you cannot be the person that you want to be and who you're destined to be while you're holding on to this poison. So, so the best way to let go of that poison is to say, I want to, I want to let go of my anger. I want, I don't want to be angry anymore. I want to be free of anger. I want to be patient and forgiving. I want to forgive the people who hurt me. You have to want it. If you don't want it, it won't happen. And even if we superficially say, I want it, if you want something more deeply, subconsciously, then that is what you'll get. Your subconscious desire will overrule any superficial kind of affirmation you say to yourself. So it's very important to align what you want in your heart with what you say out loud and what you want in your mind. You align it and you mean it. You say, I want to be a more loving person. I want to let go of all my angry tendencies. I want to let go of any desire to judge and punish and criticize and accuse and berate. I want to let go of that. I don't want to be that person anymore. I don't want to be like that. I want to be a loving and forgiving person. I want to care about all the people I meet, I want to be friendly. I want to be a friendly and concerned 
and loving person. And if you really mean that, and you have to mean it, otherwise you're wasting your time. Just saying it means nothing. If you, re- if that's what you really want, and if you really want to be, um, to be living in more peace, if you really want more peace in your heart, I want to be free of fear. I don't want to be afraid anymore. I want to be courageous and strong. I want my heart to be filled with love and faith. Not afraid, but trusting. If you truly say that and truly want it, it will happen. Because you get what you want. And it is possible, irrespective of what's happening in the outside world, it is possible to live in peace, complete peace, to live in trust, to live in a knowledge that you are safe and to know you are loved because you are loved. And again, this is not a belief system. You are loved. You are surrounded by love. But it's you who who is punishing yourself. If there is suffering in your life, it is you who is punishing yourself. It is you who is denying yourself the love and all that that love entails. You are the one that's denying yourself that love and stopping yourself from experiencing it. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we believe another voice. There is a voice of love which wants to reassure you, wants to tell you the truth and tell you that you um, tell you that you are protected and safe and loved. But there is this other voice which wants to essentially persuade you that there is danger, there is threat all the time. The, the world is a dangerous place and that you are doomed to suffer badly. And this voice wants to make you weak, which is why it always tells you that you're pathetic. It tells you that you, you're never going to succeed. It's the voice of criticism. It's the voice of uh, fear. It's the voice of accusation and condemnation, the voice of punishment. And so we decide which voice we listen to. If we listen to that voice, we will be weakened, so weakened that we will we find ourselves giving up because we the world seems like such a scary place and we believe all the things we hear in the media and and we just feel terrified petrified and that's a reality which you can move closer towards if you keep listening to that voice i don't recommend it this is why it's urgent that you stop listening to that voice because it has only one destination in mind for you and that's terror and petrification absolute fear now the other voice the other voice wants you to live in peace it wants to reassure you it wants to heal you it wants to soothe your heart it wants to sing healing to your heart it wants to tell you how much it loves you and and again this isn't just a belief we will feel that love we will feel it when we start listening to that voice because our heart is designed to receive the love from that force which is greater than us. You could call it divine love, universal love. Some people call it God. But our heart is designed to receive it like a cup, which is designed to be filled up with life-giving liquid. Our heart is designed to receive the love from that greater force, that greater loving, intelligent force. And so, All we have to do is listen, listen to that voice that tells us to relax, to open our heart, to feel safe, because when we feel safe, we relax. And when we relax, we feel safe. It's very important to notice when there is tension present in your body and realize how important it is to let go of that tension. Very, very important to let go of tension, let go of stress, relax your body because when your body relaxes your heart relaxes and when your heart relaxes obviously it opens when our heart is tense it's like a fist it's tense in fear and our our heart is the part of us which reacts most which is most sensitive to fear so when we feel afraid our heart tenses up because it doesn't want to be hurt and so it's very important to to let relaxation spread from our body 
into our heart so that our heart can become more open and as it opens the love that surrounds us and that surrounds it flows in it's like a you know it's a bit like um, imagine if you fill a plastic bag with air and you tie it up tight and you hold that plastic bag under the water now the water can't get into that plastic bag it's full of air and it's tied up tight all you have to do is start untying the knot slowly slowly untie the knot underwater and slowly the air is released and the water flows in so as you untie the knots in your heart which are the tensions and the fears and the pain as you untie those knots let your heart relax then the water the love of God the universe whatever you want to call it it just flows in automatically you don't have to do anything you don't have to believe anything because you are experiencing the divine truth, which is love. Part of you, the deepest part of you, knows that to be true and wants to experience that and really wishes, it wishes that you could be free of all that stops you experiencing that so that you can experience the love, the peace, the freedom, the joy, the rest your heart is longing for and you can just start by relaxing just start by relaxing your heart and saying I want to feel the love of God I want to feel the love of God I don't want to be afraid I don't want to be anxious I don't want to be resisting I don't want to be worrying I just want to feel the love of God and know that I'm safe because every human being is desperate to be safe we live in a world where we are bombarded with messages every day all day long telling us that we are threatened and a lot of these messages are in here that suffering is coming the hardship is coming it's almost too good to be true to feel that well actually I'm safe now and I'm going to be safe in the future there's nothing to fear there's nothing to worry about I don't need to be anxious because I am being guided and protected and provided for and all I have to do is allow that guidance allow that protection allow that providence and that's true that's all you need to do and you do that by allowing love into your heart if you don't allow the love into your heart then you will remain cut off from the source of your happiness, the source of your peace, the source of your safety, in fact, the source of your safety. Love is the life raft that will keep you afloat and stop you drowning in the sea of negativity, a sea of misery, a sea of pessimism and hopelessness, which many people are you know, drowning in already. You know, more than ever before, many people are drowning in this sea of hopelessness and negativity and fear and anger even you know so we need a life raft which is love which is a love that will lift our heart like a balloon or a buoy what Americans call it a buoy I think you know that you see on the water it's just it can't be pulled into the water it can't be pulled under because it's afloat it's buoyed by the air by the love and that's what your heart needs the love isn't there then you are going to sink sorry to be a realist and sorry to be so direct but if there's not love in your heart you will sink you need your heart needs to be full of love to stay fully afloat it needs to be full of love and that means we have to push out all the other things which are um, taking up the space where love should be as all this junk taking up the space and for love to fully inhabit your heart we have to get rid of the junk which is your pain your anger, your resentment. Mostly those three things, your anger, maybe I've said that already. All that creates a wall, all the things which create a wall against love and say, no, love can't come in here. All those things need to be destroyed, washed away so that you can get what you really really need and you really really need it the love of God will save you save your heart because your heart which needs to be saved because your heart is where you are 
you're not in this body, you're in here. That's your home. Home is where the heart is. You dwell in there. The light which you are, you're not a, you're not a physical being, you're a spiritual being. You are this divine spark of light which is God's attention, awareness. Your home is in here. And so when your home is a dark place, then your reality is a dark place. When there's darkness in your heart from fear and anger and pain, when you're living in the dark, then you can only see darkness around you in the outside world. It's reflected out there. Whatever, you, whatever you're dwelling in, in here, the world you're occupying in here, is simply reflected out there. This is why it's crucial to allow your heart to be transformed by the light of God, the love of God. Let the light in. Let, it, let all the negativity wash, wash away. Let all the fear wash away. There is no reason to be afraid. There is no reason to be negative. There is no reason to be angry because what you need is available and what you need and that thing which is available will save you. It's right there. It's available to you right now. You are the only one stopping yourself from having it, from experiencing it, from allowing it to wash you clean free of the darkness, completely free. And when you're free of the darkness, believe me, you are free indeed. No harm can come to you, none. You are truly safe, strong, protected, provided for, untouchable, unshakable, when your heart has been fully illuminated by love. So, as I said, this awaits you. All you've got to do is want it. God will do the rest, or divine love, or whatever name you feel comfortable with. This force of intelligence knows how to purify your heart, and it will do it, I promise you, because this is the path that I've gone through. I'm speaking from experience, 20, 25 years of experience of, on this path of releasing all the obstacles to love and God's light, releasing all the obstacles. So I know the process and I know that the most important thing is to want it, to want this process of releasing all the darkness and opening up to the light and the love. You have to want that, which means not becoming, not being angry anymore. You have to let go of your anger. And a lot of people like their anger because it means power. People like the power that anger brings them. They can scare other people. They can intimidate other people. They can dominate other people if they're angry. But do you really want to be a scary, intimidating and dominating person? Or would you rather be a loving person who feels loved primarily and who shares love? Then you are a person who people look forward to seeing. You are a person who lifts others. You are a person who people want to be around. You are a person who people want to model themselves on. You can be that person just by changing your nature, or just by wanting your nature to be changed by God. Wanting to be a loving person, a giving person, a forgiving person, a patient, a non-judgmental person. So I recommend out loud admitting that you want that, to be that kind of person. Out loud confirming that that is what you truly want because you will get what you want. If you've had enough of suffering, then this is the path you need to take. You need to want healing, want illumination, want freedom, want to be purified, to want your heart to be purified. So say out loud, if that's what you want, say, I want a pure heart, I want my heart to be purified. I want to let go of the anger, the fear, the pain, the judgment, the hostility, don't want that anymore. I want to be healed. I want my heart to be a place of light and love. That's what I really want more than anything else. If you can say that, then the work will begin immediately. And it's not you who does it. You do the letting go. You're the one who's holding all the negative things there in your heart. You're holding on to the anger. You're holding on to the resentment. You're holding on to the pain, the judgment, the hostility. You're holding it there by justifying it with your mind. We hold these toxins in our heart 
by justifying their presence, by telling ourselves, yeah, I'm right to judge, I'm right to be resentful, I'm right to, to wallow in my pain, I'm justified. And that's what we all do. We convince ourselves to hold on, to keep those things there. But our heart is constantly trying to wash them away, by the way. Your heart is constantly trying to purify itself and wash away the anger, wash away the resentment, the pain, etc. But we keep holding on and we won't let them go. We're stubborn when it comes to our, our dysfunction and neuroses. We're, we hold on to them stubbornly and possessively, like they're important to us. They make up our identity. I'm this person who can't be messed with, so I've got to hold on to my anger. I'm this person who's been wounded by life and who's just been taken advantage of. So to be that person, I've got to hold on to my pain. What happens if you let go? You stop being that person. You become a healed person. So what kind of person do you want to be? Do you want to be a healed person? A free person? Because whatever you want, you will get. And if you want to be free of suffering, if you want to be free of darkness, and you want to be free of pain, then you, it's important to want to have your heart healed. It's important to want to have your heart purified by God's love, or just divine love if you prefer. So I recommend that you want that. And every day, remind yourself that you want that. And every day, practice letting go of your neuroses, your dysfunctions, your judgments your impatience, your unkind thoughts, your intolerance, your fear, it's a big one, but we have to let go of them and trust, trust that the love that we are opening up to is enough. It's enough, it's enough to protect you, keep you afloat and pr protect you from harm. It's enough to do that. It's enough to uh, nourish you, so you don't need materialism, you don't need you know, material indulgence because that love nourishes you and it also orchestrates your life so that you are able to share. It gives you opportunities to heal, it gives you opportunities to let go of your anger and judgment and pain and fear, it gives you opportunities and if you take those opportunities when they arise and you do let go, let go of the dysfunction, then it will give you opportunities to share your love, to give to others. There is no greater satisfaction in life than giving. Because when you give, you realize that you're not lacking, you're not short of anything. That's the, that's the only real way to appreciate that you are truly um, blessed beyond all comprehension you're abundant beyond all comprehension but you can only experience that when you give and then it becomes a reality not just an idea a belief but a reality when you give so life will give you opportunities to give to so many people and that's where the real fulfillment and joy of life comes then you experience what life is about and then it stops being this dark cerebral anxious experience or angry experience and it come, becomes this rich, illuminated, deeply rewarding, beautiful and joyful experience where there is no one to be afraid. No threat can come near you. No harm can encroach on your, on your mind because you trust with your heart. So you ignore those thoughts. You ignore the fearful thoughts or the anxious thoughts, all the thoughts of doom and disaster. You ignore them because you trust this voice more than this voice. And that's what you need to do. You need to trust this voice instead of this voice. Stop listening to that voice, in fact. And stop watching the things which are feeding that voice, which is essentially the worldwide media. The worldwide media is being harnessed as a force to feed the anxious mind, to feed the uh, desires of the flesh the desire for power, the desire for carnal indulgence, the desire for food and anything material, the media is feeding that, making you into a consumer. It wants you to consume, consume, consume. It doesn't want you to be a giver. It doesn't want you to be a light, you know, touching the people around you, reaching out and enriching the people around you. It wants you to be a consumer. 
and so it's important to stop consuming the media so that this isn't being fed anymore and your desires for the material pleasures of the world aren't being stirred up anymore and instead you stay strong or you strengthen your desire for spiritual fulfillment or your desire for love to put it simply you strengthen your desire for love and your desire to share that love it's that simple to receive the love and then share that love and there is nothing more fulfilling nothing you can pursue um, obtain by no experience on this planet in this body comes even close to the fulfillment of receiving divine love and then sharing that divine love in any way you want to and that's what awaits you so I hope you've understood everything I've said and understood that what the obstacles are so that you can become aware of them be aware of be alert to the tactics of the, um, the ego which doesn't want you to open up to love it wants to it wants to keep you in your judgments and your superiority and your intellectual kind of um, intellectual superiority basically it wants to keep you in this intellectual realm of understanding because then you're not feeling you're thinking you can't think and feel you've got to choose one and you are a feeling being your heart wants you to feel it because it's your heart which will change your world it's your heart which will change the universe it's your heart which will change your perspective so listen listen to your heart because that is where the voice of love is speaking from that's where it lives that's where you live you've just forgotten you've kind of um, been living in this map and you've forgotten where you really are so it's important to give your heart space relax breathe come back into your body ignore all thoughts have a complete holiday from thoughts and just say out loud what it is you want I want to feel my heart I want to be cleansed of pain and fear and anger I want to feel love I want to receive the love I want to be a vessel of love I want my heart to be healed so that there is only love in my heart and I want to share that love with those around me I want to be a force of good a force of love a force of kindness a force of healing that's what I want and I hope that's what you want too okay so thank you for watching this video I wish you well and God bless you enjoyer of joy singer of songs with you is where my heart belongs I give you my all my care my love I from below meet you from above I dance in your light I bask in your warmth, I flourish and grow, I give you my form, nothing more ask I than that which you give, the radiant light which allows me to live, in ecstasy we play you and I, like the swallow that dances amongst the sky, my song to you I will sing evermore, I am here just for you forever, be sure. If doubt it should come of my love for you, then listen close now to what you must do. Open your eyes, your ears, look around. See my form and hear my sound. Feel the earth beneath your feet, the sacred ground where you and I meet. Feel the rain which falls from my clouds, feeding all life, making stand proud. The plants, the trees, the givers of breath, inspiring with life keeping from death, supporting my children is all that I do, dependent on this kiss from you, of this I am sure you cannot resist, my open space for you to exist, I love you completely, O giver of life, to the husband of beauty, from eternity's wife.